Lies. Don't you have anything better to do? Hikari-san had been completely relieved of her duties by Yuri-san. Instead, go help Kunigisa-san and the other guy, she had been told. It was a soft way of saying, no way in hell am I going to entrust any of the housework to the prime suspect. Or at least, that was partially what she meant. And thus, the three of us remained together, even after finishing lunch. Would you two go ahead of me? I said to the two girls on the way to Kunigisa's room. I want to stop by Iria-san's room for a bit. Kunigisa, hold on to this. I pulled a small knife out of my pocket and handed it to her. You've been walking around with something that dangerous? Hikari-san said in a surprise. A young man always carries a knife in his heart. And a young woman carries a pistol, Kunigisa joked, and she took the knife. Well, let's go, Hikari-chan. But it's okay, it's okay. Let's leave it to Yi-chan, Kunigisa said, half dragging Hikari-san along. As long as they were together, Kunigisa wouldn't have any trouble going upstairs. That was one of the reasons we were in a team of three. Well, I guess we're going then. I did an about face and began walking to Iria-san's room. Time to request another audience. I gave myself some mental prep. Then I took a deep breath. I knocked on the thick door, waited for an answer, and then entered. Inside the room, I found Iria-san and Rea-san, as well as akari san and terika san which I guess I probably should have expected since they were a team. All of them were sitting on a sofa, elegantly sipping black tea. akari san awkwardly avoided eye contact with me, as if trying to escape. She must have been regretting going bananas on me that morning in Kunigisa's room. That was only natural. But it was I who was at a loss of what to do with her speaking so openly to me. Iria-san's mouth slowly curled into a smile. Is something the matter, Mr... Um... What was it? You're the one who proposed that we operate in teams, and now you're here alone? That's a bit of a problem now, isn't it? It carries on your team, you know. Iria-san, I interrupted. Hmm. You still don't plan on contacting the police, do you? Not a chance. A snappy answer. An utterly cold, curt response. She was just amazing. You're really wonderful, Akagami Iria-san. I don't think that's a good thing, to be honest, I said. Would you also care for some black tea? It was Rei-san. She stood up without waiting for my reply and walked over to the pot. Iria-san shot her a look that seemed to have some hidden meaning, but then looked back towards me. If the police come now, you'd be in a sticky situation yourself, don't you think? Akane-san was killed because of your suggestion, after all. It doesn't matter if it would put me in a sticky situation anymore. I live to be given the runaround. More important, what about you, Iria-san? Akagami Iria-san. You might be killed too, you know. What do you think of that situation? With Rei-san's invitation, I took a seat on the empty part of the couch next to Teriko. Teriko made no attempt to look at me. Her vacant eyes stared off into space from behind her black glasses. It was like her focus was out of alignment or something. Or, no, it wasn't out of alignment. It just wasn't in tune with mine. The black tea was good. Iria-san took a long pause before answering me, as if trying to intimidate me. What do I think of it? Of this situation. It's terrible. It's, it's a terrible event. Of course, that's not all I think. But what if I were to say the same question? What do you think? It's a dangerous situation. I have no interest in sticking around with a murderer in our midst. And I have no interest in sticking Kunigisa in such a situation either. I didn't know how she felt about things though. I had no idea. But as for me... Hmm. Do you think murder is a terrible thing? Yes, I do. I answered promptly. I do think that, without question. No matter what reasons they might have, murderers are the most despicable type of human. Hmm. So what would you do if you were going to be killed? I mean, if it was kill or be killed, what would you do? Just sit there and wait to die? I'd probably kill. I'm not a saint. But in that moment, I would consider myself the most despicable type of human. What kind of person he or she was. You look like you're speaking from experience. Iria-san gave me an unsavoury smile. It was a wicked smile. Perfectly befitting a woman with such absolute power. With such an overwhelmingly upper hand. I thought she reminded me of someone. Ah, yes. Kanami-san. It was some sort of, didn't you know that, kind of smile. But why would a non-genius like Iria-san have a similar smile to Ibuki Kanami-san? You think murder must be punished? But imagine you set some food in front of the mouse, and every time the mouse tries to eat it, it gets an electric shock. What do you think the mouse does? 
mice are capable of learning, so it would probably stop trying to eat it. Wrong. Mice are capable of learning, so it would eat the parts of the food that aren't electrified. Humans aren't mice, and mice aren't humans. She clapped both of her hands together. Gee, as long as we're discussing this, maybe you'll answer this for me. Why is it wrong to kill people? It was the kind of question you would ask a junior high school student. She didn't seem to be joking. Because it's against the law. Because it's easier to function in society if you believe that. Because I don't want to be killed myself. All of the above lack persuasive power. I agree. So this is my answer. There is no reason. You need a reason to kill someone. Like maybe you were pissed off. Or you wanted to kill the person. Or whatever. But nobody kills without some reason. But it's not something you choose, right? To kill or not kill. That's not something you choose. That's just drivel that people with a Hamlet complex spout. The instant you embrace such doubts, you cease to be human. Am I who suffers noble? What a joke. Killing is wrong, I said. That's an absolute. You don't need a reason. Hmm, is that right? She nodded with a blatant insincerity. I suppose I can understand where you're coming from. But if we knew who the killer was, this case would be closed. Once Aikawa gets here, we'll find out who that is. I don't know this Aikawa-san, but I do. Isn't that enough? Akari, tell him when Aikawa-san's coming. In three days, Akari-san answered, still without making eye contact with me. We asked Aikawa to come earlier than planned, so there you have it. If we knew who the killer was, of course you could just leave. You're here on this island because you're a suspect. That's the only reason a talented, mediocre boy such as yourself is here. Speaking of which, you didn't have an alibi when Ibuki-san was killed, or when Soniyama-san was killed. Did you? Thunk. I placed my still more than half full cup of tea back on the saucer and let out a deliberate sigh and slowly rose to my feet. Please make excuse me. I think we're speaking completely different languages here. Indeed, she sneered. There's your exit. Teriko, see him back to his room. Reisan said to Teriko, sitting next to me. So he's not all alone. You shouldn't have a problem with that, right? With a quick nod, Teriko san got up from the sofa. I didn't fully understand what Reisan had meant by that, nor how to react to it. But nevertheless, Teriko advanced out of the room on her own. I scrambled after her, leaving Iria-san's room behind as well. By the time I got out of the hallway, teriko san was already quite a ways ahead of me. What kind of escort sped out of the door ahead of the guest? As usual, I couldn't read her mind at all, and it wasn't just a matter of her doing things at her own pace. I accelerated to catch up with her. More important, my conversation with iria san really hadn't gotten anywhere at all. I had more or less expected that, but still, I was surprised at how quickly that it died. It seemed Iria-san really trusted this Aikawa-san. But did such an amazing detective really exist in this world? I hope so. I sincerely hope so. No. I was wishing for it. Praying. Maybe that's all nonsense too. I let out another sigh. I would just have to I would just have to try again. It didn't seem likely that I would be able to progress very far without cooperation of an owner of this mansion. It was nothing to brag about. But I could be surprisingly determined, and I was a sore loser, the worst of the worst sore losers. There was no way I would give up that easily. Huh? Did someone say something just now? I could have sworn I heard someone's voice. I looked around the hall, but nobody was around besides Terako san and me. It must have been my imagination. My ears were playing tricks on me. Maybe I was losing it. Hmm. No, it was the sound of a voice, which meant there was one other highly, highly unlikely possibility. I knew that it was nearly impossible, logically speaking, but could it have been? Was it possible? terrico san did you say something? By any chance? She stopped. She stopped upon hearing my question. I said it would be better if you were to just die. I was speechless. It was the first time she'd ever spoken in front of me, and I never would have guessed it would be in a line such as it would be better for you to just die. That was too much. Was she for real? And then she turned to me and stared from behind those dark glasses, perfectly still. It was an accusing gaze. I couldn't help but wince. We stood like that for a while, her staring me down. But realised I didn't have the perseverance to beat her, I decided to just ignore her and keep walking. As I tried to pass, she grabbed me by the arm and tightly clenched it. Squeeze. Felt like an electric shock had run through my elbow. Without releasing my arm, she pulled me to the nearby room and shut the door behind her. She forced me onto the sofa, 
From there, she sat me down and we were face to face and removed her black glasses. Those are just for show. They're so we can be told apart. She raised her face. Her voice was exactly the same as Akari-san and Hikari-san's. That clear, beautiful voice. Is that right? No, I'm lying. I just don't want to look at your face. No, I'm lying. I just wanted to see you make that face. Can I help you with something? Unable to figure out her intentions, I knew that it would be bad to get swallowed up in this bizarre situation. I tried my best to seize the initiative by asking questions, but she just sat there looking around the room without giving any response. I'll give you a word of advice, she suddenly asked, continuing to ignore my question. It was as if she was talking to a ghost behind me. You'd be best to live on your own. When you're around other people, you cause trouble for them. The worst part was, without her glasses, she was completely indistinguishable from Akari-san and Hikari-san. Being told this kind of stuff not only by Maki-san, but now her too, was, to be honest, unpleasant. I felt like I had been betrayed. A person who does nothing but bother other people should just stop being a person altogether. If you can't do that, then you've got to go on living alone. That's what I think. Why are you saying this? But I'm the same way. A clear answer. Her expression showed no change. Not even a flicker. But you're here with other people, and we've stopped being people. We? Exactly who did that include? This morning, Akari was rude to you. I apologise. She changed the subject without any segue, and her pale expression and her tone of voice remained unchanged. Why are you apologising? That was me. Huh? She continued, oblivious to my confusion. It wasn't really me per se, but it was my body. The three of us all share these three bodies. All three of us have three personalities each, and each of us has the same personality and memories. So, although the one screaming at you this morning was Akari, it was really my body. You're lying. Yes. She kept a completely straight face. What's up with this girl? She kept throwing me crazy curveballs. I didn't know where she was going. I didn't know where she was going with this at all. Now then, enough with the chit chat. And she thought this was a, just a chit chat? Let me get to the point. I don't think it's very wise to be yakking on and on about the police about my... Let me get to the point. I don't think it's very wise to be yakking on and on about police around my mistress. She can be quite patient, but everyone has a breaking point. Why is Iria Sam being so stubborn about it anyway? She says it's to keep the peace here, but... But I can't help but think there's more to it than that. And hadn't the peace already been broken? She didn't seem to be interested in peace in the slightest. You really want to know? I do. Terako-san stood up. She came over beside me. She leaned up against me. She was stuck to me. Her body was all the way up on me. It's because no criminal likes the police, she said, her voice completely devoid of tone or cadence. That's why. I was at a loss for words for a moment, not quite clear what she meant. Surely you've wondered why my mistress is on the island. Why do you think she's here? Well, with a personality of hers, she's messed up. She was being a little sparse in the details, so I had no idea where the conversation was headed. How could triplets raised in the exact same environment have such completely different personalities? It really was like multiple personality disorder. Huh? Huh? What do you mean my messed up? kunigisa san can't handle extreme vertical motion. That's why you're here, yes? Yeah, that's right. I guess she wasn't much for flattery. Is something wrong with that? My mistress is the opposite of that, she said eloquently. It was almost like she was reading right out of a script and a fairly dry reading at that. That's why she's on this completely deserted island. She immediately continued. Have you ever seen my mistress's left arm? If you saw the scars all over her wrist, you would understand too. The scars? On her wrist? As dry and monotone as the voice was, it was deadly serious as well. They called it abuse syndrome. I'm sure even you've heard of it. Abuse syndrome? She must have meant DLLR syndrome. Indeed, I'd heard of it. A form of autism in which a person can't exist without harming him or herself, as well as others. To be more specific, it was that at the high end of the autism spectrum. At any rate, it was exceptionally bad, impossibly unsavoury, extraordinarily atrocious type of mental disorder. In my time at the programme, I had read some literature about it, but I had never actually witnessed a case of it in real life. Though, I knew someone who had, as he had put it, a person capable of killing without bearing any sense of guilt is truly a scary thing. Truly scary indeed. Was she saying that... Was she saying that was Iria-san? 
But DLLR syndrome was such a rare condition that its very existence was subject of great suspicion. It was a fairly compulsive condition, so it was supposedly extremely rare. There hadn't been a single case of it in Japan, and even in the States there had only been a small, countable sample. But I guess that's the law of great numbers at work again. Terako-san, that's... Just as we are triplets, my mistress also has a twin. Mistress Odetti. Iliad and Odyssey. That explained why. Is that right? So, what's her sister doing now? She's dead. You mean it, right? I mean it, she said. And the one who killed Mistress Odetti was none other than Mistress Iria. Do you understand? Do you understand what this means? Have you grasped the logic here? It means that you've just insulted my mistress with your filthy mouth. Murder is despicable no matter what the reason. Huh. I didn't really mean to. Your intentions are irrelevant in this case. At any rate, I presume that you understand why we go to call the police now. If you understand, please go back to your room and please stop making waves. Without another moment's hesitation, she got up from the couch. I could tell from her disposition that this conversation was over. Uh, but, oh, oh, terako san don't make waves? That was my line. terako san I blurted out spontaneously after. Contrary to my every expectation, she stopped in her tracks by the door. What? Like, say there's a kid who spent the first ten years of his life locked in the basement without communicating with a single person, including his own kin. Can you imagine what that kid would grow up to be like? She didn't answer. Naturally, I wasn't hoping for an actual answer. I just thought I'd try asking. This girl here, this quiet, sallow-faced girl, living her life in silence. To me, she was probably... You and I are totally different, she said in a fairly harsh tone. It was like she could read my mind. She spoke without even looking back. Don't you dare make me out to be related to you in some way. It's disgusting, and it makes me nauseous, and it's an incredible nuisance. Sorry to hear that. You have nothing to belong to in this whole world. Not just here, the whole world. If, you, if you'd like me to put it simply, you're a popped cork, she said. That's actually more than I wanted to hear, especially from you. It had to be me who said it, because nobody else will. She didn't look back. She continued all the same. It seems you still don't understand why him and Isam picks on you so much, but the reason is obvious. It's because she can see what's in your mind, and nobody likes filthy things. I'm saying you're filthy. No need to repeat that. I'm fully aware of it. Oh, you're aware of it, and yet you manage to go on living. Well, that's the spirit. That must, that must take a lot of willpower. That's worthy of respect. Or could it be that you think that there's someone out there who will like you, even after you've revealed yourself to them? Do you actually believe that someone out there will choose you? Then, you really are a popped cork. There was nothing to say. Her words echoed. They were too heavy for me. I was going to collapse, fall to pieces. How dare you barge into other people's lives when you're harboring such a monster inside yourself? You're lower than an insect. You're shameless. The world isn't forgiving. How grossly conceited are you? And that's why she opened the door. Then for a moment, she looked back at me. It was the expression of a woman staring at an object of her truest heartfelt loathing. It was an ice-cold look. You should just die. Kathunk. The sound of inorganic matter. The door closed. The power drained from my body. It was like the feeling you have when your shackles are removed, but without the sense of liberation. Jesus. What a circus. I felt as if I was going to be crushed. Completely pulverised. This is the nonsense to end all nonsense, seriously. Left all alone, I sat and thought, you know, what was it? I tried to recall everything that she had said. Unlike Akane-san's conversation the previous night, there was no theorising this time. There was no reasoning, no explaining, just the naked truth thrust in my face. Oh man, that did me some damage for real. I shook my head. Don't think about it. There are other things we think about right now. I got up from the sofa and left the room. Looking around the hallway, not even terako shadow remained. She was pretty light on her feet. Maybe that was another way in which she resembled me. Anyway, all that mattered was that the information terako had left me with. The scars on iria -san's wrist. Her background. The fact that she had killed her sister. And, in doing so, had been exiled to this island. Her abuse syndrome. Autism. Thinking of that, surely it is clear why she wouldn't call the police. Wait a minute. Hold it. 
a revelation. I had seen Iria-san changing clothes before my eyes yesterday, the first time she granted me an audience. But there was no scratch on her wrist. Not that I was staring at her limbs the whole time, but surely I would have noticed such imposing scar if they really had been there. Wait, wait, wait. I stopped in my tracks, scratching my head. What the hell is this? Essentially, Terako-san was a big fat liar. Just like me. On the way back to Kunigisa's room, I ran into Team Maki-san, Shinya-san, and Yoyoi-san. They were apparently on their way to eat. I was a little jealous. With Yoyoi-san on their team, they could eat amazing food whenever they wanted. Not that I had any complaints about Hikari-san's cooking. <laughs> Boy! <laughs> At the very sight of me, Maki-san burst into laughter. I was beyond finding this rude anymore. It was no less expected than changing of the seasons. Why is it this time, Maki-san? You're bustling with energy. <laughs> Young man, it looks like terika san did a real number on you. Oh, my stars. That's what you get. How do you know? You're still asking me that. Thanks for the amusing show, Mr. Spineless. You must never get bored. I'm jealous. For sure, Maki-san must have led a boring life. She knew all that had happened, all that was happening, and all that would happen. It was like watching a non-stop stream of movies where you already knew the ending. There was no doubt that it sucked the fun out of life. That's not exactly true, she teased. Was she drunk? She seemed oddly high. The inside of her head must have looked like a mentaiko. Gah, she glared at me. Say, should you really be alone at a time like this? Genius-san still looked a little blue seemed to have calmed down a bit. He was no longer pale. Even though it could be cruel sometimes, in the end, time really is kind to all. Kunigisa-chan and Hikari-san must be a little edgy on their own. They're just petite little things. And Hikari-san's the prime suspect right now, right? Your beloved Kunigisa-chan could be in danger. He seemed to be half-joking, but it was clear that he really was worried about me. I bowed to him in gratitude. <laughs> You'll have to excuse us now, Mr. Half-Bit. Don't think too hard, Maki-san teased, and then turned her back on me. Shinya-san shot her a look. If you're feeling responsible for Sonoyama-san's death, I don't think you should worry about it. You did everything that was in your power. You couldn't have done anything else. You did your best, he said to me. Thank you so much. I bowed and thanked him. Well, see you later. With that, he turned around as well. Yoi-san gave me a few odd looks that seemed to mean something, but with no more than a sight and a nod of her head. She went off with the other two and headed for the dining room. What was that about? There wasn't anything suspicious per se, but something was strange. Eh, I guess it's not really anything to be worried about, I muttered to myself. Upon returning to the room, I found Kunigisa nose deep in busted up computer parts while Hikari-san was doing some cleaning. Word had it that Hikari-san was a total neat freak. Come to think of it, she did always seem to be cleaning. I suppose it was one form of workaholism. Was there no single normal person on this island? Hey, hey, Ichan, you're just in time. For what? Pulling my hair up. Gotcha. I approached her from behind. I decided to give her a bunch of mini braids and began braiding together small portions of her hair. Ah. She sighed with pleasure. Thomasan, is it okay if I clean up that mess? Don't call it mess. I can still use some of those parts, so I'm retrieving them now. You gotta reuse stuff. Recycle, recycle for Mother Earth. Recycling is important, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but what should I do, huh? Maybe I can make a secret weapon and stop that killer. She sure knew how to keep her chin up. Not that I wanted to be like her, but you had to admire her positive thinking, even if it's just because she had never known negative emotions. <sighs> oh, right. Hikari-san, do you have a memo pad or something? And something to write with? They're in the cabinet. Do you need them? I want to write up an outline for the current situation. We had made an alibi chart yesterday, but the data was smashed to smithereens along with the computers. Therefore, I want to create a new chart that included updated information. I see, she said, and headed to the cabinet. Oh, hey, Tomo, I forgot to tell you. Remember that painting? I figured out what was strange about it. Hmm? Oh, yeah, you were saying something about that, weren't you? So what was it? The watch. Watch? Yes, the watch. When I was modelling for the kitchen of Kanami San's Azalea, I hadn't been wearing the watch. It was broken, and I gave it to you to repair. So there wasn't anything on my wrist. Nonetheless, on the canvas, there was a watch painted on it. Kunigisa looked puzzled just for a moment, then reverted back to her usual expression, and delivered a stock question. 
Hmm, don't you think that's just an error? I can't imagine it's very important. Well, yeah, maybe, but how about a subject and a predicate? The watch display. Was it the blank one or the one after I fixed the display backwards? Oh, well, actually, I'm sort of faced inward like this, so I couldn't tell. Hmm, she nodded. After a moment's thought, she said, Yeah, I think it was just an error. More important, I thought of a clue. Maybe Akane Chan's murder was like her headless body was all. Err. Uh, err? Uh? Her hands were kinda. She tilted her head to the side and folded her arms. Well, not her hand, but her fingers. Like something unnatural. I mean, really unnatural about them. I think. Oh man, my memory capacity has hit its peak. It feels like there's a big mosaic in my head. Hey, Hikari chan, did you notice anything weird about her fingers? Hmm. Hikari san, who had returned at some point, sat down at the carpet next to Kunagisa and was facing me. Sorry for the wet, here's some pen and paper. Thanks. I took the supplies from her and recalled the chart that we made yesterday. Whipped up a new alibi list for Ibuki Kanami and Sonny Akane's murders, including everyone on the island. Ibuki Kanami. Murdered. Sonny Akane. Before the earthquake. X. After the earthquake. X. Murdered. Kunigi Satoma. Before the earthquake. Not. Ichan, Hikari, Maki, Shinya. After earthquake. X. Not. Can't go downstairs alone. Sasha Runner, Yoyoi. Before earthquake. Not. Iria, Re. After earthquake. X. X. Sleeping. Chiga Akari. Before earthquake. Triangle. Terako. After earthquake. X. Not. On the mainland. Chiga Hikari. Before earthquake. Not. Ichan, Tomo, Maki, Shinya. After earthquake. X. X. Chiga Terako. Before earthquake. Triangle. Akari. After earthquake. X. Not. On the mainland. Sakaki Shinya. Before earthquake. Not. Ichan, Tomo, Maki, Hikari. After earthquake. Not. Maki. Handare. Before earthquake. Not. Iria Yoyoi. After earthquake. Triangle. Area. Triangle. Area. Himane Maki. Before earthquake. Not. Ichan. Tomo. Hikari. Shinya. After earthquake. Not. Shinya. Not. Shinya. Akagami Iria. Before earthquake. Not. Re. Yoyoi. After earthquake. Triangle. Re. Triangle. Re. Phew. Or something like that. Staring at the chart, I let out a sigh. Alibis, huh? But, you know, this doesn't really mean all that much, does it? We pretty much shelved the idea of being a cooperative crime up until now. But if you consider that possibility, this chart doesn't mean squat. Especially looking at these two and three person alibi testimonies. There was also the possibility that people other than the killer had lied to us just so that they wouldn't be suspected. And if you consider that, this chart information was even harder to swallow. Well aware of the futility of it all, I decided nonetheless to write up a similar salary outline for the murder incidents themselves. First incident. Victim. Ibuki Kanami. Conditions. Sealed room. River of paint. Solved. Time of incident. Night. Presumably after earthquake. Notes. Decapitated body. Killer unknown. Second incident. Victim. Sonyama Akane. Conditions. Sealed room. Open window in a high location. Unsolved. Time of incident, between 2 and 9.30 a.m. Notes, decapitated body. And, killer unknown. I finished writing and put the pen down. Are you forgetting about the third incident, Ichan? Kunigisa immediately objected. The poor Kunigisa-chan incident. Oh, right. It pales in comparison, but there's a mystery too. Huh. Don't say that. To me, it's a greater tragedy than having my head cut off. As long as they've gone this far, I wish they would cut my head off. Okay, okay, I picked up the pen again. Third incident. Victim, Kunigisa Tomo, Mrs. Computers. Conditions, unsealed room. No lock, enterable by anyone. Time of incident, between 10am and the end of breakfast. However, everybody in the mansion was together at the time. A time-sealed room? Notes, destructor's goal presumed to be destruction of image data taken from the scene of Ibuki Kanami's death. A time-sealed room, huh? The first incident involved a room sealed by a river of paint. The second, a room sealed by an unreachable window. The room sealed in terms of height. And the third incident was a room sealed in terms of time. The second, third and fourth dimension, huh? 
that sure makes it sound like a crime of enormous scope. Say, Hikari san, this question is pretty much completely undermines any pretense we've had up until now, but is it possible that there are other people on the island? It is not, she stated confidently. There's only one spot in the whole island where ships can dock, so I think I can say for certain. I see. But if that were really true, then it would be absolutely impossible for this to have happened to Kunigisa's computers. With enough wit and wisdom, a person could feasibly get through the sealed plane and conquer height, but time was one domain impenetrable by man. So I wonder if there was some kind of trick to this as well, like a remote control or something. Hmm. But this is obviously the work of a human being. Hikari-san, is it possible that one or two maybe slipped away in the midst of all the confusion of discovering the body? I mean, there was a headless dead body right before our eyes. Maybe someone took advantage of the situation and walked off while we were distracted. I don't think so. Hikarasan was still unconvinced. Even I couldn't help but scratch my head at the idea. And I was the one who brought it up. In reality, we probably would have noticed if someone had disappeared from the room. First instant, anybody could have done it. That is, if you consider the possibility of a cooperative crime. But, but we've at least figured out how they did it. And we know it wasn't really a sealed room after all. Now, second instant. This time, we have no idea how they did it. But I, as an exception, could have done it, Hikari-san said. I nodded. And then the third instant, nobody could have done it. Moreover, there was no possible way it could have happened. The incident itself was rapidly growing more complicated. This didn't bode well for the next incident. Jesus, what kind of cycle is this? Well, I don't want to think it was all planned out intentionally. Hmm. But it doesn't feel right to write it all off as a coincidence either. Anyway, let's stop thinking about this disheartening stuff, I said. Alibi, steeled rooms, tricks, gimmicks, setups, fakes, whatever. Let's just agree that someone is using some unimaginable method to fool us all. Maybe it's a virtual machine. Yeah, that. I guess. They often say in old mystery novels it's hard to make the puzzle than to solve one. But I don't think that's true. Creating a puzzle or trick or what have you is far easier. In creating a puzzle, you're free to display events from whatever angle you please, completely catering to your own convenience. Solving the puzzle, on the other hand, can only be done from one presented angle. So for now, we just had to place the issue aside. But don't you think we should at least consider alibis? That's pretty much all the information we have right now, Hikari-san said. And if we start making emotionally charged arguments, everyone will become suspicious. Didn't Sonny Yamasan become the prime suspect after Ibuki was murdered because they hated each other so much? But look at what happened because of that. Yeah, but it really would have made sense if Akane-san was the killer. And now Akane-san was dead, too. What about the thought that Sonny Yamasan killed Ibuki-san, and then someone killed her in revenge? If that was the case, then I guess Shinya-san would be most likely to have killed her. He was Kanui-san's caretaker, and closest friend. But Shinya-san has an alibi. Even if he set that aside, how would he have known that Akane-chan killed her? Maybe he didn't. Maybe he just had a hunch. Mistaken revenge may not happen every day, but it's not unheard of. If you think about it, what's the deal with Shinya-san and Maki-san? They've got alibis two days in a row, in the middle of the night. Don't you think they're having alibis is conversely kind of suspicious? It's a little, huh? Maybe they're synchronising stories in secret. But you know, Himune-san doesn't really seem the type. Himune Maki, the indescribable fortune teller with superhuman abilities. The absolute absolutist. Able to gaze upon the inner workings of men's minds and hear all of things. Something about her resembled Kunigisa. It was weird. What's up with you, Ichan? Have you fallen for Maki-chan or something? Jeez, don't say that. But you know, a spaced out woman like her can't be expected to have the best common sense. Man, this really was all futile. I felt like I had already considered every possibility. It was like we were stranded. What else was there left to think about? It kind of seemed like maybe Akane-san knew she was going to be killed. Huh? Hikari-san leaned forward in surprise. What do you mean? It just seemed that way. Last night, I had a conversation with her through the door. And at the time, well, it was like she was at peace. She was corroding Ryokan and stuff. It was really out of character. Hmm. I wonder if she knew who the killer was, Kunigisa said. Indeed, that was a possibility. She was Sonyama Akne from the ER3 system, Seven Fools. Even without conducting an investigation, if she had a hunch about who the killer was, it'd be pretty much sure to be right. By the way, Hikari-san, I was talking with Teriko-san. What? She was even more shocked than before, as if I'd just made an ungodly remark. No, not shocked exactly. It was more like she was thinking. Why would you tell me such a blatant lie? You mean Terrico talked? 
yeah, I was pretty surprised too, but the real problem is what she said. I explained to Hikari-san and Kunigisa what Teruko had told me. Of course, I cut out the latter half. I was never one to go around bursting my own faults. So what does it mean, Hikari-san? How much of it was true? Hikari-san wore a completely perplexed expression as she muddled over the vague response. Hmm, she muttered. Hmm, well, hmm. Hikari-san was ranting about something strange this morning as well. I'm so tired of this, or something like that. What was she talking about? She was still stumbling over a response. At last, she looked up at me, seeming to have made her mind. But still, her eyes darted back and forth as she deliberated for another moment. Finally, she opened her mouth. It's all true. Huh? Admittedly, that was not the answer I expected. This time, it was my turn to be speechless. It was all true? Huh? What did she just say? I'll talk because it's come to this, and because I choose to trust you, and because I owe you. Hikari-san fell silent once again, and then, looking more lost than ever, finally continued. Yes, my mistress is technically a criminal. We serve her in full awareness of that. And that's why you won't call the police. We just work for her. We don't do anything else. Ever since coming to the island, various things have happened. That's how we eventually met Hikari-san, who you've been hearing about. Various things? What various things? The incident on this island? Come to think of it, the other night. Hey, Tomo. Yeah, Ichan. I seem to recall you saying something along the lines of, I'm interested in the incident that happened on this island, but is it just another figment of my awesome memory? Nope. Then you knew. Yep. She nodded with a giggle. It's pretty well-known info. Lots of people know, but nobody ever talks about it. Not a lot of people are looking to make enemies with the Akagami Foundation. So, Kurugisa's hobbies hadn't changed since the good old days. Maybe the passing of five years wasn't enough to alter her nature. Actually, it was mixed in with the rest of Chikun's information, but I thought it might be better to keep it a secret from you. So, why? Because I knew you'd make that face. <laughs> Come on. I was drained. Pelody. Faltering. Painfully. Hikari-san continued. Once we started planning this salon... My mistress was able to calm down a bit, but I can understand Akari's feelings of frustration. But you know, this is our job. A job, huh? If she really meant that, it was quite a statement. I was honestly impressed. I respected any person who lived solely to fulfill their role, regardless of what that role was. It was something I could never do. So Akari-san too was truly immersed in the deepest depths of her abyss. Huh? So that's the deal, huh? But what did that mean? If the killer knew all this, and knew Iriasan couldn't call the police, then... Then the remarkable boldness, audaciousness, and fearlessness of his or her actions all suddenly made sense. Okay, Hikari-san, well... Just as I was about to ask for details for this famous island incident, there came a knock at the door. It was... Yoisan. I have to go to the bathroom. That's what Yoisan told Maki-san and Shinya-san in the middle of lunch before breaking off from their team and coming here. It was a pretty typical and hackneyed lie, and Maki-san could read minds anyway, and even under the weather, Shinya-san probably could have seen through it. But one look at Yoyo-san's sickly blue expression, and they probably wouldn't have called her a liar if she said a pack of devils were on their way to the island on Turtleback. She sat down on the sofa and said nothing. She seemed strangely wary of Hikari-san's presence. Maybe she, too, thought Hikari-san was the killer. It wasn't such an unexpected assumption, to be honest. Can we assume that you came here because you wanted to tell us something, Yuyoi-san? It didn't look like this was going anywhere on its own, so I went ahead and asked. Yes, she nodded weakly. Um, you two are doing some investigating, right? Well, that's the plan. It's become a personal matter at this point, after all. I said, looking at the computer parts in the corner of the room. What about it? Well... If you're investigating, I suppose the facts must be accurate, right? Yeah, well, naturally. If you proceeded from here with inaccurate information, there could be a third incident, right? Fourth. That's right, Yuyoi-san. We ignored Kunigisa's protest. That's the situation. Um, Yuyoi-san, I don't really understand what you're trying to say. It looks like you came here to help us, but am I wrong? Did you come here because you don't like being in the team with Shinya-san and Maki-san? No, that's not it. She mumbled. It's just... I I told a lie. I can't take back. 
a lie? Yes, that night. I really was with Iria Sam talking. It was only up until the earthquake. But that much is an honest fact, she said. But Handersan... Handersan wasn't there. Karasan's face went stiff. Ray-san. Handa Ray. It was suddenly clear why Yoisan seemed so nervous around Hikari-san, and why she had seemed so unnaturally detached since the other day, staying holed up in her room all the time. The ice was melting. The other morning during the alibi check, Iriasan had said herself that she, Yoisan, and Ray-san were together. Everything else was questioned one by one, but when Yoisan's turn came, Iriasan spoke for her. I thought this was simply because they had been together, but it seemed that wasn't why after all. Iriasan. Akagami area was covering for Handare. Yoyoi-san slumped down with her shoulders drooped. It was like she had been relieved of a terrible burden, or freed of a curse. Why? Why had she kept silent about such important detail up until now? It was a question I had no position to ask. This was Iria-san's island, and Iria-san's mansion, and it was Iria-san who invited Yoyoi-san here. And she was, after all, Akagami area. If Iria-san said, I was with Yoyoi-san and Rei-san, who could argue? Who could just call her a liar? Like, anyone could say that. I didn't think it was a big deal at the time, Yoisan finally said. I just figured she was looking out for her own. But thanks to that, Akane-san became the only person without an alibi, and she was locked away and killed. She was speaking like a burst dam. I sat and listened in silence. Kunigisa and Hikari-san did likewise. And then, regarding last night, Iria-san said she was with Rei-san again, all night long, but... Who could believe that? She said they were discussing what to do from then on, but why would that take all night? Well, it's possible. I don't think so. Just because someone lied the first time doesn't mean they lied the second time, but the chances are pretty high, right? And Hikari-san, Yoi-san glared over at Hikari-san. Hikari-san is one of Iria-san's inner circle too, but Iria-san didn't even try to cover for her, did she? Why is that? Why would she cover for Rei-san, but not Hikari-san? Isn't it because she knew that there was no need to cover for Hikari-san? Isn't it, conversely, because she knew who the killer was? Are you saying that Rei-san is the killer? I was surprised by this. I didn't think the conversation was headed in this direction, but Yoi-san seemed absolutely serious. Certainly our alibi is rather dubious now. That is, if we can believe what you're saying. It's the truth. Whether you believe me or not, it's the truth, she said. Hikari-san looked like she wanted to say something, but as if having realised something, she remained silent. She chewed on her lip with a painful expression. Let's just hold on a second here. If Rissan didn't have an alibi that night, how did that change things? Maybe not that much, but the fact that Iriasan lied was unarguably huge. Rissan wasn't in Iriasan's room that night, which meant they weren't together after the earthquake either. Which meant... Hmm, hey, Yuyo-chan. What is it, Kunigisa-san? Why do you think Rei-chan is the killer? She's the head maid. She's the confidant. She's the hotshot. She's even closer to Iria-chan than Hikari-chan and the others are. So maybe Iria-chan just covered her out of friendship. And we really don't know if she was lying the second time, even if she was lying the first time. And if Iria-chan really was the murderer, then that means Iria-chan knew about it, right? Why would she cover for... What if Iria-chan ordered the murder? Gulp. Someone swallowed audibly. Someone swallowed audibly. For all I knew, it could have been me. I don't think that's the case. Kanemishan and Akanishan were both invited here as guests. What's the point in bringing people over and then killing them? What if she invited them here to kill them? Yoi-san pressed on. Iria-san invited people here and all those people were killed. If you look at it that way, it's not so unthinkable. Was Iria-san using Rei-san as a plot to kill those two? As well as possibly a third, fourth and fifth? It seemed like a highly unrealistic notion, but there was no proof against it. Yeah, and on that note, Hadn't I just heard the proof for it from Terikosan and Hikarisan? Handare, the head maid. As Hikarisan and Akarisan and Terikosan's boss, she was the close position to Iriasan herself. So how about it? Was that the answer? Was that what it all came down to? Akagami Iria, named for the great ancient Greek classic epic Homer's Iliad, the work that told of the great war of Troy over Helen. All of the characters in the epic thought they were being manipulated by gods. Was that it? If that was the answer, as I thought, Yoisan continued on. Do you know why I was called here? Because you're a genius, right? She grimaced. Well, Ibuki-san was a painter, 
a magnificent artist. Sonny Amasan was a scholar, fine. Makasan was a fortune teller, whatever. Kunigisa sounds an engineer, yes? That's wonderful. But I'm a chef. Unless she's some kind of gourmet cuisine nut, why would she ever call such a person here? I don't think cooking is really that special. I was silent. Hearing her say that, there was no possible response I could give. And do you know why Ibuki-san and Sanami-san had their heads cut off? That's a sudden change of topic. No, it's not, Yoi-san said with a stern expression and turned to match. You are what you eat. It's an idea that exists in Chinese cuisine. If your liver is bad, you should eat a liver. If your stomach is bad, eat stomachs. In other words, if part of you isn't working right, you should eat the same thing. I'm sure you've heard of this. Hang on now, you yoi san This is... This... This notion. Who called Ibuki-san and Sonny san to this island? Who? yoi san screamed, her voice reverberating through the room. The sound lingered in my ears, but I was so confused at this point, I didn't even care. Hold on. Hold on a minute here. Did she mean what I thought she meant? Just wait a second. Hold the phone. I'm begging you. Just give me a little time. I'll say it one more time. No, I'll say it as many times as it takes. Why would the killer cut off their heads? Why would the killer take the heads with her? Where did she take them? And who was it who invited those two women here? Who brought these renowned geniuses here? What was inside those heads the killer carried off? If jewels are stolen from the murder scene, it probably means the killer was after the jewels. If cash is missing, it must have been after cash. Such thinking was just plain common sense. And in this case, it was the victim's heads that were missing. Yoisan continued. Why was I invited here? Why was I, not an artist or a scholar or a fortune teller or an engineer, but a mere chef, invited to this island? Why have I been given special treatment and allowed to stay here indefinitely? Her voice sounded like it was being squeezed out. It was the voice seeking rescue. She had probably been brooding over this, from the moment she had given a false testimony, from before Sonny Yamasan was killed, and indeed, half day following her death as well. Yoisan had probably been thinking about it non-stop. Yoisan turned towards Hikari-san, and began her hopeless screaming once again. What? Just what are you going to make me do? Someone swallowed again. This time, it was definitely me. Was it? Wasn't that acceptance of such a notion itself unforgivable? If that was really going on, why now? It wasn't like the whole salon thing had just started. If that was Iria sans little game, she would have done this in the past. No, the five geniuses on the island right now were all world-class top specialists in their respective fields. Had Iria san been waiting for this exact timing? That's impossible, Hikari san shrieked. It was like she had exploded after holding it in until now. The idea that my mesh would do such an inhuman thing, such a cruel thing now. Now. I'm so tired of this. The past. Various things. So tired. Now. Why now? I'm so tired of this. Please don't make waves. I'm so tired. Tired. So tired. Even though I'm so tired. But Yoisan didn't relent. I've been keeping an eye on Handa-san since yesterday morning, she said. You know how the longer you watch something, the more you notice the similarities to you. Or you start to feel their humanity. Their humaneness. Some kind of closeness, you know? It's like, oh, this person is just like me. I felt that with Iryo-san. She's human, just like me. She's live, but she's still a human being. But, Handa-san, that woman frightens me. How could I not be afraid of a woman like that whose whole life is an act? That's... Hikari-san interrupted, with her head hung. That's... Th that's... That's... But it seemed that there was no end to the sentence. Even so, Hikari-san tried desperately to defend her mistress, in accordance with her duties. It was too heartbreaking, to the point that it was laughable. I see... Yoi-san, I basically understand what you're trying to say. You're trying to say this, right? I tried my best to force my way into their conversation, but it was hopeless. Yoi-san continued her relentless questioning. Hikari-san and Terako-san were on the mainland calling on a detective. Who can prove that? Who's the one that won't contact the police? Who's the one that won't let us leave the island? Maybe you were left out of the plans, Hikari-san, but where's the proof of that? They called you a prime suspect, didn't they? Where's the proof saying that you aren't just a scapegoat here to shake things up? No- no, maybe you're in cahoots with Iria-san, here to make trouble for Kunigisa-san, and said, Please, stop this. yoi san that's enough. I said, quietly. Please, stop insulting our friend. Kunigisa and I both dislike getting angry, but we're not afraid to do what we must. My gaze was probably fairly cold, and she shivered for a moment at the sight of it. She had the same look of uneasiness that she had when she entered the room. I I'm scared. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm just scared. Yes, I understand that. 
This is a deserted island. There's nowhere to run. If this is all what I think it is, maybe I won't be killed. You weren't invited here as a genius, so you might not be killed either. But your dear friend Kunigisa-san is in danger. Not even God can guarantee that she won't be the next one to have her shoulders flattened, if you know what I mean. The time for leisurely investigations has already... I mean, I think we need to do something fast. I didn't come here to hiss at Ikarasan. I came here because Kunigisa-san is an engineer. Can you operate a boat by any chance? If so, let's get out of here on a cruiser and... Hold on. I held my right hand. She looked up at me with a confused expression. Ikarasan eyed me curiously as well. Only Kunigisa remained staring off into space, a somewhat irritated expression on her face. I was probably making the same face. Hmm, where was I? Why did I interrupt you, Yoisan? Oh, right. Please say that again. Huh? That thing you said, say it again. Yoisan tilled her head at me a bit. If so, let's get out here on a cruiser. Not that. Can you operate a boat by any chance? No, not that either. Uh, I didn't come here to yada yada yada. No, not that. Something grabbed me, but it wasn't it. Before that. I, I don't remember. Well, remember, what did you say before that? We need to do something fast. The time for leisurely investigation has... No! We already understand that. We need to do something fast. We need to do something fast? That's practically a catchphrase. I don't care about stuff we already know. I think it was a little before you said that. That's all I got. That's as far as I can recall. Tomo, I looked over to Kunigisa. You remember, right? Yep. She nodded. She slashed her hands across the front of her neck. I'm going to get my shoulders flattened. Bingo! Yes, that. It grabbed me. Was that because it suggested something I'd rather not imagine? Nope. It wasn't nearly something that trite. It was something totally, completely different. Now this. This was the key. The Rosetta Stone. Um, silence please. I'm thinking. I think I'm on the right track. Definitely. It's simpler than the geography of Kyoto or Sapporo. We have a hypothesis and a conclusion now. So all that's left is to prove it, I thought. Kunigisa thought too. All the ingredients were probably there. I could sense it. Or we already had all the ingredients a while ago. They were all lined up in front of my face, to the point that it wouldn't have been strange if I'd realised the truth as soon as Kunigisa's computers were smashed. The smashed computers weren't the key after all. They were another ingredient. And now I had the key. This time, I had it. And just as any door will open once you have obtained the key, so too would I soon arrive at the solution. It was like a zero-sum game, like a simple maze with a water-type winning strategy. Kunigisa probably had it too. The mountain of sand was almost complete. Now this is really nonsense. And after a while, this, is this it? I muttered. But this was. No way, this can't be right. This couldn't be right. Like this could possibly be it. What logic was this? But there was no contradictions. It was all consistent. It all made sense. It was more complete. There was no other possibility left. It didn't look like there was any more sand to pile up either. Something felt uneasy. Something was strange. No matter how many mental checks I did, I couldn't feel satisfied about it. Like the final question on an exam. I definitely wasn't wrong, but something felt off nonetheless. It was, it was that kind of feeling. I couldn't shake it. What was it? This vague, sickening feeling. What do you think, Tomo? Hmm, she moaned. There's no what you think about it. There's only one possible train of thought. So that's why the fingers seem strange, huh? But this means... It seemed Kunigisa had the same sense of anxiety. Yoisan and Kikarisan stared at us too like we were from Mars. Venus, maybe. I guess that's a trivial matter either way. I guess that's the only possibility, huh? Kunigisa was the first to fall before the reality of the situation. I can't think of anything else. It must be the only possibility. Yeah. If there's only one possibility, it's got to be the right one, no matter how unbelievable it seemed. It looked as if we had to rely on selective thinking in the end. If Akane-san had heard about it, she surely would have gone angry, but we no longer had to worry about that. At least in so far, as this was in fact a case of a serial murder committed by a person. There was only this one possibility. One possibility with 100% odds. Okay, time to just accept it. I didn't like it at all, but this was reality. This was truth. And those were just my nonsense-ridden sentiments anyway. Looks like we've reached an agreement, Ichan. Kunigisa said. So what now? What now indeed? Hmm. This place is a little too big. I continued my pondering. I was more cut out for something like this than Kunigisa was. I may not have been any good at actual shogi, but if this too was a sort of shogi problem, I had it down. Now then, Yuyoi-san, Hikari-san, could I ask you for a little bit for your cooperation? Huh? The lovely duo let out a collective question mark. I rose to my feet. 
The top of the inning is fully over. We're down to a lot of points, but it's not cold game yet. This is where we get that third out and launch our attack to the bottom of the inning. Yo-Chan on first, Hikari-Chan on centre field, Yos truly as catcher, and E-Chan as pitcher. Boing. Kunigisa jumped off the bed and flashed a smile as bright as the blue sky. Launching counter-attack. <laughs> 